and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivation advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of love. In most of my episodes, I talk about success, motivation, and inspiration. But none of that matters without love. Love is the fundamental thing that makes the world go round. Whether it's the love of a parent, a child, a partner, our relationships are what gives our lives true meaning and purpose. True success is being around people that love you, celebrate you, and are there for you through the good and the bad. As the saying goes, there is only one happiness in life, to love and be loved. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. So I wanna talk about Valentine's Day. You know, when we think about Valentine's Day, we yeah. think about people that are newly dating. So what about the people in relationships already that, you know, maybe lost their spark? How do they regain that? So I think it's important to, um, you know, especially if you're, you're two professionals working from home, I think it's really important to um, schedule in those date nights and do something fun and have a theme around it. Like maybe it's Taco Tuesday and you're gonna make margaritas with tacos. Maybe it's, uh, we're gonna like do a, a yoga class tonight together. So you're sweating and working out together. You want to also have like designated workspaces in the home so you're not on top of each other. Next on the show, on this Valentine's Day edition, we have relationship expert and dating coach, Shannon Teb. Shannon is also a matchmaker and helps singles find their dream partner. Shannon, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me, Daryl. Yeah, you definitely are doing fantastic. I see the palm trees and I was just complaining how cold it is here in Toronto. It's freezing. <laughs> so you're definitely starting your day <laughs> great. <laughs> I promise to bring some, some sunshine home to you all. Yes, please. We would really like that. <laughs> so, you know, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. So your services are so timely. I want to talk about you're a matchmaker. So I want to talk before I talk about your services and what you do. I want to talk about like, how did you become a matchmaker? So, yeah, I started my brand back in 2010 and I was actually inspired by the movie Hitch. Oh. I was very uh, passionate about helping singles get back into dating. I work with a lot of divorcees, people that maybe don't know how to, you know, navigate the dating, uh, the dating world nowadays. Everything's changed with online dating. So I was really passionate. I was one of the first dating uh, coaches in Toronto, oh. and I also hosted uh, social events in the city, which brought a lot of um, singles out to my to my events. Which then I built up a, a, a large network of singles and transitioned into matchmaking, which I love. Yeah, and, and speaking of that. How can a matchmaking coach help you find love? What can they teach you? For people that are maybe skeptical or not sure if they should get a matchmaker, how, how can you help? Well, the thing is like, people that use matchmakers, you know that there's confidentiality. People have been vetted, they've been screened, they want a relationship. So you know the expectations are clear. When you work with a matchmaker, it's almost like I do all of the screening, I create the profile for you. You know uh, what you're seeing is true. Online dating, you may not know what the expectation is, what the person wants. And if the photos are up to date, there's a lot of things that sometimes are fake on online dating profiles. So by working with a matchmaker, you know that there's that level of security, confidentiality, and it, it allows me to manage your dating lifestyle. So less work on your end and I help you know, manage your dating life, which is really important for business professionals that don't want to be online and swiping and messaging. Mm -hmm. And walk us through the process of joining your services or, you know, getting a matchmaker. What is the process of doing so? So a lot of people find me on Google or, th or uh, through referrals and they, they complete the online matchmaking submission form. It's a short questionnaire. Then from there, I set up the virtual matchmaking consultation, which is complimentary during COVID because I'm meeting you over, um, you know, over Zoom. And then from there, if you decide to join on, you join a membership and there's different um, introduction dates that are included in that membership. And then I create your profile for you. We add in your best photos and then the matchmaking starts. What kind of criteria <laughs> do you use to link people together? So I'm a very visual matchmaker as well. Like I try to visualize the two singles together because I believe that you can match on paper, but there also has to be that level of chemistry and sparks mm -hmm. and excitement. 
So if I can kind of see two singles together, that's a good chance that it's going to be a great match. Also, I match on, you know, income levels, occupation, uh, relationship status, like are you a divorced parent, uh, looking to also meet a single parent. Uh, what's your lifestyle? Are you really active and sporty? Then I'm probably going to match you with someone who also enjoys uh, physical fitness. So really, we look at all of that. Like, how do you show up in a relationship? What are your best attributes? I try to kind of dig a little deeper than just the standard questions like, where did you grow up? How old are you? How tall are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to get a little deeper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and talk to us about some of the success stories you've seen, because I'm sure I saw somewhere that you had a 78% success rate with your matches. So let's talk yes. about some of the success stories. Well, so a few years back, I actually coached uh, one of my girlfriends who married her spouse, and they've been married for seven years now. And she mentioned me in her wedding speech and was very grateful for my coaching. Um, also, I've had uh, couples uh, date for three to four years and um, some engagements and weddings. So it's really great when you just make that, you know, sometimes people register on and it's that first match that seals the deal. And then I lose them because they're in a relationship. And that's why we're always rebuilding our roster because when we have a successful match, they're on their own, they're happy, and we always want to um, work with new singles that come our way. Mm -hmm. And is there a short list of people that, you know, that the person can pick from or do they have different options and do they meet yeah. with them? How does that work? Yeah, so Darielle, what I like to do is showcase one match at a time because with online dating, there's the proximity of choice. And sometimes when you get too many options thrown at you, it's, you know, people get left out. So what I try to do is show one, one profile at a time. If you accept the match, she accepts the match, then I, I do a number exchange. And for now, during COVID, people are starting with a phone chat, followed by a video date, and then a walking date if they feel comfortable. So it's really about being creative in the dating space. Um, you know, dating and love and relationships have not been canceled. So, you know, know that there's other singles feeling exactly uh, the same way you are, and they are looking to connect, and they want to, you know, still find that relationship. And that's, that's why I'm busier than ever, mm -hmm. I which can is imagine. great. Yeah. And you know, with COVID, mm -hmm. it's so difficult to go out there and meet people because usually, you know, you can go out and meet people, but with COVID, you know, people are home. So it, it makes it difficult. So how do you, um, what advice do you have for people to meet people during the pandemic? Yeah. So one thing that I, that I started and it, it wasn't really for singles, it was just for community is I created a, a Facebook uh, COVID cooking group which allows you to showcase your recipe and put up put and showcase your photos so that's really grown i think it's up to 400 people but it's a great community of singles you know people in relationships everything but you never know who, who knows somebody or who has a single um you know uncle or brother that would be a good fit for you so i think the first tip would be you know staying uh, staying active in your community virtually and joining new groups and you know taking up new hobbies and interests whether it's learning spanish um, you know, whether it's a virtual yoga class or or joining like a Barry's boot camp where you see that there's other people involved and you can kind of be like, hey, I saw you on Instagram <laughs> on the live. Mm -hmm. So there's really ways to get creative and, and create new conversations and connect with other people. Don't don't isolate yourself. And if you do need help, you know, reach out to a matchmaker, reach out to a dating coach, do your research and see what what which opportunity is the best fit for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, as you said, you're, you know, you're a dating coach, relationship expert. So I want to talk about Valentine's Day. You know, when we think about Valentine's Day, we yeah. think about people that are newly dating. But what about the people in relationships already that, you know, maybe lost their spark? How do they regain that? So I think it's important to, um, you know, especially if you're, you're two professionals working from home, I think it's really important to um, schedule in those date nights and do something fun and have a theme around it. Like maybe it's Taco Tuesday and you're going to make margaritas with tacos. Maybe it's uh, we're going to like do a, a yoga class tonight together. So you're sweating and working out together. You want to also have like designated workspaces in the home so you're not on top of each other. So at the end of the day, when you come together, you both end your work schedule at the same time. And now it's your time. It's your time to you know, spend together, not talking about the kids, not talking about finances, but just focusing on each other. Of course, you want to be supportive to your partner, but you also want to create those 
kind of fun, interesting date nights, even under your your roof, right? Make、mm-hmm. it sexy, role play, dress up. Don't be afraid to get creative.、Um, I have lots of ideas around that. So if anyone needs help, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> You know, I was just gonna say too.、Uh, that leads me to my next question. With quarantine, there are couples together, quarantined together, working at home in the same space together, twenty four seven, maybe annoyed with each other. So, how do you find romance during those、yep. times when you're together, you're working twenty four seven in the same space? How can people find balance in that? <laughs>、um, just know. Okay, so for couples, my tips,、um, you know, so you're not always in each other's space. Go out, get out for a walk,、um, do things independently as well. But then when you come together, have a plan, have a theme night,、um, do a yoga session together. Know when to really detach from social media, from work, so that when you do spend time together, you're not stressed and still thinking about work and what needs to be done. I think、um, you know, bringing、um, a space in the home that you can kind of spend time individually as well, and then re. We、um, recoup together. I think also gives you a little bit of a break, so you're not feeling smothered,、mm-hmm. um, and just being supportive, and you know, being there for your partner if they're stressed with something, and、uh, and giving them a little kiss or sending them a flirty text throughout the day, like, "Hey, I'm in the office thinking about you," or you know, just、yeah. be fun and playful.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely, and you know, with Valentine's Day, things are closed. There's no restaurants or romantic getaways. So, what advice do you have for people to celebrate at home? Any tips? <laughs> yes.、Yeah, so, I thought of a few things. I thought, you know,、um, turning your kitchen or dining room into your favorite restaurant. So,、oh, nice. I mean, I I love gustos and I love the the mushroom mafaldi pasta. So, maybe cooking that dish together,、uh, going out, getting the sa- the ingredients, picking a nice bottle of wine. And creating that dinner that's romantic, or maybe it's doing a spa a spa day. Like、mm-hmm. maybe it's the next day for Valentine's. You wake up and you have a spa day with essential oils and candles. You're in your robes. You're relaxed.、Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, some other things you can do is、uh, have a movie night with your favorite snacks、uh, mm-hmm. by the fireplace. Just make it romantic. You definitely want to plan ahead and not just wing it. So create a theme or an activity around your Valentine's Day this Sunday.、Um, if your love language is words of affirmation, your partner loves that loves words of affirmations.、Uh, don't be afraid to, you know, write them a love letter and maybe put that in a gift basket.、Um, I think it's really nice when you let someone know all the the reasons why you love them.、Mm-hmm. It's a nice reminder. Um, also, to stay connected and maybe you know get romantic again. Think about when you first met. So reminisce about you know past vacations. Look at photos. Think of like the times you spent together that were really fun and engaging, and that can like reignite some more some sparks and be like, oh yeah, remember when we did this and you know when we first met? How, what were those feelings like? And, and get back to those moments. Mm-hmm. And just you know, get rid of distractions. Make sure the kids are gone. You have the house to yourself, and、uh, yeah, you're able to focus on each other.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's great advice, and you know, I like that you touch base on love languages. I was always interested in that and how, you know, with people, you know, when when a couple has two different love languages and they express love or express themselves differently, how do you find that balance and you know communicate and still have compatibility? Yes, like like you said, it's important to know your partner's love language because we give and receive love in different ways. So if you know your partner's love language is words of affirmation. Then you're going to, you know, want to tell them like, "Wow, you look beautiful today. I miss you. I love you." If it's acts of service, then pr- potentially you're you're going to pick them up from work or make them dinner or do something that shows, you know, that acts of service or physical touch. So once you know how your partner gives and receives love, I feel like that can save a lot of marriages from ending because the expectations are really clear,、mm-hmm. right? If someone doesn't like to be like cuddled all the time, then you need to kind of respect that and say, "Hey, I'm going to do other things for my partner to show, you know, that's how they want to, you know, encompass the love and 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 take it all in."、Um, mm-hmm. So, so with V Day planning, think about the、um, five love languages and apply that to the date night or the date day.、Mm-hmm. And last but not least, as a dating expert, what do you find from your experience and all the success stories you've seen? What do you find are、mm-hmm. the most fundamental things that make a relationship work? 
I would say definitely uh, trust, loyalty, uh, great communication, intimacy, and support, mm. right? So when we support our, our partner and we're there for them at the end of the day and we ask how things are going, and we're, we're intimate, we make time to make love with our partner and not say we're tired. Um, you know, you have to be be selfless and know that, you know, to, to have a successful relationship, it takes two people and be loyal. And um, yeah, and just talk it out in the moment. If something's bothering you, be, have open communication, also giving and receiving feedback in a nice way. Mm -hmm. Like when, when this happens, I feel this way rather than you're a jerk, you never take out the garbage, <laughs> I've had enough, right? Yeah. So you don't want to attack your partner. You want to share, like, sometimes when I don't hear from you during the day, it makes me feel like I'm not a priority or I really miss you. And like having that text during the day would re is really important to me. And once you communicate that, then things will change and things will work to your advantage. So don't be afraid to have those important conversations that you, need, that you are looking for answers for. Mm -hmm. And be vulnerable and open. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that's fantastic advice and very true. Uh, where can people connect with you on social media and use your services? So uh, I'm Shani in the city on Instagram, Twitter. I don't use too much, but I'm on LinkedIn under Shannon Teb. My website is shaniinthecity.com. And um, yeah, I love to help anyone who comes my way. I work with singles 25 up to 60. So I've really done it all and helped coach people through online dating profiles, whatever they need help with. Um, I believe we all have our own stories and our own, you know, dating strategies that we want to work on. And don't be embarrassed by that. Just, you know, ask for help. Mm -hmm. And um, it's nice talking to somebody that's not your mom or your sister that's going to give you advice that, you know, I'm very open and honest and give the constructive feedback. And um, our goal is to get you 100% date ready. Mm, very nice. Well, Shannon, you're great at what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's much needed, especially right now. But thank yeah. you so much for being on the show today and enjoy the beautiful weather in Costa Rica while we are freezing thank here you. in Toronto. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.